Hello everyone. There's hardly any food that is tasty and complete without salt. Salt is an integral part of almost everything that we eat and its importance is underlined during its absence rather than its presence, right? In this video, let's look at all the problems that high salt diet causes to your health. We'll start with the sources of very high amount of salt in our diet and then look at the exact mechanism how it causes problems to our health. And trust me, it's not just about high blood pressure, there is much more to it. And then finally look at some of the easy and realistic ways of controlling our salt intake. Sardar, when you have a drink, Sardar? Um. Golika. You may be surprised to know that the severity is so much that even WHO has taken up this agenda of decreasing the dietary salt intake by at least 30% by 2025. So do watch this video till the end so that you get complete information about the salt intake, the problems caused by it and some realistic ways of handling this modern day problem. The WHO recommendation for maximum permitted salt intake per day is 5 grams. But an average Indian consumes roughly about 11 to 12 grams of salt every day. Which means almost all of us are consuming more than double the amount of permitted salt every single day. Now as all of you know, the salt we are referring to here is sodium chloride, right? So each gram of salt has 387.6 milligrams of sodium. So 5 grams of salt will have roughly about 2 grams of sodium. So please remember these two numbers that is the maximum permitted salt intake per day is 5 gram and which is equal to the maximum permitted sodium intake per day is 2 grams. Now let's look at the amount that goes into our stomach with various foodstuffs. Historically ancient human beings used to consume very less amount of salt that is roughly about 1 gram per day. Uh, that was mainly because the, they would consume fresh meat with the less than 0.5 grams of uh, salt per pound or uh, plant products with very uh, low amount of salt. But with modernization, the amount of salt intake gradually increased. To begin with, it was mainly used as a means of preserving food and then obviously for the taste aspect of it. Uh, eventually, salt became so integral part of human life that uh, oppressive salt tax was even responsible for the French Revolution. And even in India, salt tax led to the civil disobedience and the famous march led by Mahatma Gandhi. We can divide our salt sources into three categories. The first category is homemade food, restaurant food or fast food outlet food with very high amount of added salt in it. The second category is the packaged or the processed food where a high amount of salt is added to it both for the taste aspect as well as for the process of uh, making it last long. Uh, well in this actually the high amount of sodium or the salt that is added is displayed in the nutritious information but somehow we fail to acknowledge that. And the third category is plenty and plenty of locally available snacks in the bakery with absolutely no nutritional information present in it. But of course having very high amount of salt in them. Studies show that the main contributor is category 1. That is the salt added to our day to day food. May it be gravy or any other snack. We Indians just love adding a little more salt to it. And advertisements only contribute in uh, creating that impression in our mind that salt is healthy because of the added iodine or iron in it. Ab namak hi le lo. Ham bhool gaye hain ki wo bhi prakriti ka aashirwad. Jaise aashirwad namak, jiska har dana hai bhin aur rang swabhavik, na ki chamkila. Aashirwad namak banta hai kudrat ki god mein. Pure teen hafto tak samudra ke khari pan ko sukha kar. Jab namak ho aashirwad, mile khane mein asli swad. Restaurants, fast food outlets with eatables like samosa, patty, ketchup just shoot up our salt and sodium intake. Now coming to the second category, let's just take Maggi as an example. So if you can see here, 100 grams of Maggi gives you 1.2 grams of sodium. Just keep in mind that 
permitted amount of sodium in a day is 2 grams. So Maggi itself overloads your system with more than half of the permitted amount of sodium in a day. And I have a few friends who add additional salt to Maggi once it's prepared. These are few of the commonly used food items with the amount of sodium in them. Clearly showing us how much of salt we are over consuming every single day. Third category is the worst with so many snacks and numkeens. You don't even know how much of salt you are ingesting through them. So it's always better to have a check on uh, those food items. And to make things worse, even some of the most nutritious food items are made unhealthy by adding salt to them just for the sake of taste. Okay, now that we know the sources of a very high dietary salt intake, let's just try to understand why exactly is it bad. I mean, after all, it's just salt. I'm sure all of you must be aware of the relation between high salt intake and hypertension or high blood pressure, right? Yes, that's absolutely right. But the problems related to high salt intake are not just restricted to hypertension. That is, the risk of heart attack, stroke or other blood vessel related diseases increase with increase in the dietary salt intake irrespective of the blood pressure. That is, if you consistently consume higher amounts of salt every single day, even if your blood pressure is normal throughout, you are still at a higher risk of developing heart attack, stroke, etc. Now, hypertension is just one of the complications or rather is just one of the means of developing those problems. High sodium in the body holds on to water that is leads to water retention and leads to what is called as expansion of the extracellular fluid volume. Now because of this, the peripheral small blood vessels constrict leading to rise in the blood pressure. The other mechanism includes alteration in what is called as renin-angiotensin system. Now I do not want to go into the details of renin angiotensin system in this video but in short what I can say is high amount of sodium in the body hampers the blood pressure autoregulatory mechanism and leads to hypertension. Now apart from this there are few other direct ways how high sodium amount in the body leads to hypertension. Now these are few of them. Alright, it's proven beyond doubt that high salt intake leads to hypertension and its consequences. Now, if my BP remains within the normal limits, in spite of taking very high salt diet consistently, does it mean that I am safe and I don't have to worry about these negative effects of uh, uh, sodium? The answer is big no. As I mentioned previously, the negative effects of high salt intake are independent of person's blood pressure. That is, even if the blood pressure is always within the normal limits, the patient is still prone to all those complications which I mentioned previously. He is still at a very high risk of developing different blood vessel related complications. The innermost layer of a blood vessel wall which is in direct contact with the blood in the lumen is called as endothelium. Now this endothelium has a very important role in keeping the blood vessel relaxed and dilated. Now this happens through the release of a chemical called as nitric oxide. Now this nitric oxide, in addition to relaxing and dilating the blood vessel, also has a very important role in preventing atherosclerosis or cholesterol deposition. I am sure all of you must be aware of all the complications that happen because of cholesterol deposition in the blood vessel, right? Consistently higher intake of salt leading to higher amounts of sodium severely hampers this release of nitric oxide by the endothelium because of a chemical reaction which actually converts nitric oxide to other chemical. Uh, as a result of this, the patient or the person becomes more prone for atherosclerosis and its complications that is heart attack, stroke or any other blood vessel related disease. Now as you can see, this happens irrespective of person's blood pressure. Whether the blood pressure is normal or elevated, the patient will still get prone for heart attack or stroke or any other disease. And you can also notice that there is no way one can predict this and uh, it comes to notice only when the patient has complications. So a big reason for us to have a check on our salt intake. Another problem with salt as I mentioned previously is that it holds on to water and losing weight 
becomes increasingly difficult if you regularly hog on a high salt diet. So do make sure to include low salt diet in your fitness regime. Now that we know about the sources and the problems associated with high salt intake, let's uh, have a look at some of the easy and practical ways of cutting down our salt intake. A very important point I want to make here is the taste of a low salt food and low sugar food is more of a developed taste. What I mean is, if you start using food which is low in salt or sugar for that matter, after few days your taste buds adapt to it. And once you get used to it, you don't really feel that the food is low in sugar or salt anymore. You can just try it for yourself. Okay, the first step towards decreasing your salt intake is being aware of its consequences. That is, majority of them don't make an effort to decrease their salt intake simply because they are not aware of its complications. So now that you know about the problems that salt can give you, you can consciously make an effort to decrease the uh, salt intake. The second step would be to try and reduce all the foodstuffs which are very high in salt or sodium. Prefer fresh food over packaged food because the very process of packaging and making it last long involves addition of salt to it. And another important thing is always make it a habit to turn the packet around and look at the ingredient and the nutritional information list. Eat these healthy stuffs like cashew, pasta, peanut, oats in their original form and not the salted form. Make a list of all your food requirements and the different brands providing the same and then just compare the amount of sodium in different brands. And obviously the brand that gives you least sodium is the one which you should opt for. Include plenty of raw vegetables and fruits in your diet. Now most of these being very low in sodium, they also are very rich in potassium which to some extent counters the harmful effects that sodium gives you. When you buy spices, try to make some conscious adjustments and alterations like prefer garlic powder over garlic salt. Other stuffs like soy sauce, salad dressings, dips, ketchups may be having very high amount of salt in them. So just look for a lesser salt version of the same. Indian homemade pickle is usually very very rich in sodium or salt. So try to reduce your pickle intake as much as possible. Most important of all, you make sure you add less salt to whatever dish you cook at home. As I mentioned previously, a lot of us ingest very high amount of salt simply because lack of awareness of its ill effects on our health. So the first step would be to be aware of its complications. If you found this video useful, do share it with others so that the awareness is spread and the health hazards can be controlled. Thank you for watching.